urban streetscapes are public places where people engage in a variety of different activities. The pace of traffic rises and falls. At times, city life is relaxed. At other times, the streets can seem chaotic. Today, the curb represents one of the most contested spaces in urban landscapes. Cyclists pedal through bike lanes. Cars battle for parking spots. Taxis, Ubers, and Lyfts pick up and drop off riders. Delivery trucks unload Amazon Prime boxes and buses pull in and out of stops. People on foot scuttle through it all, trying not to get hit. As we anticipate the arrival of autonomous vehicles to our streets within the next five to 10 years, the people and the systems that operate safe, accountable, and customer-centered mobility services in downtown urban streetscapes deserve closer study. For this reason, our team of four master students took a closer look at valet parking operators and the street adjacent spaces they work in. Our study was part of an applied anthropology class project led by Dr. Jan English Lewick, professor of anthropology at San Jose State University in partnership with Dr. Melissa Sefkin, principal scientist of human-centered systems at the Alliance Innovation Lab, Silicon Valley. During our spring 2019 semester, we were tasked with studying how cars and people interact in order to contribute insight about the social life of streets to developers of autonomous vehicles. In response, our team spent over 40 hours observing how valet service operates in front of two downtown hotels in a densely populated Bay Area city. Multiple on-site observations allowed us to build rapport with valet operators, to produce detailed field notes, and to create maps detailing the spaces valets operate in and how space affects behavior and interaction. We also engaged in informal and in-depth interviews with valet staff and valet customers to learn how they think about the delivery of valet service. To the customer, the valet service might seem simple and routine. So I would drive into a driveway and the valet would come to the car, uh, open the door, uh, I'd hand them my keys, step out of the car, and then whether I'm going into a hotel, for example, they get the luggage out, then they take the car. Usually if I need to retrieve it, I'll just head back down to the valet desk, drop off my ticket, they come bring up the car, and I'll usually give them like a tip or something, a gratuity. And that's really it. Our observations and interviews with valet staff showed us a different point of view, an orientation to work that reflected a system of care and responsibility. We are the first and last impression of the hotel experience. In valet service, people think it's just parking cars, but it's so much more than that. Responsibility is taking care of the guest's car. Every car is important to whoever owns it. It doesn't matter what kind of car it is. I mean, it could be a Pinto, but that's your babe. We value the guest's property, the car and its contents. We make sure the car is parked right. We make sure the car is not damaged. We make it easy. We make sure the car is ready to be picked up. We have it ready. We make sure there are no delays. The valet's service is mediated by their flexible and critical thinking. Valet's judgment and action, integrated with their use of radios, barcode scanners, and computer software systems, along with their organized outdoor space, allows them to take care of three things that matter to people. Time, safety of personal property, and protection from injury. So there are a lot of safety measures that go along with that. And one of our quotes is, fasten your feet, slow in the seat. Although the guest might be in a rush or they want their vehicle quick, go ahead and run to go get it, but don't speed back. That's a safety thing right there. It's huge. The routine valet service involves greeting hotel guests, collecting personal and vehicle information on a unique ticket, documenting any car damage, and safely delivering it to a parking garage or surface lot where it must be kept safe until the owner of the vehicle requests it. It seems simple enough, but what a customer might not see is how valet employees manage to pull this off in urban spaces that are often cramped and teeming with social life. People, cars, scooters, ride shares, taxis and delivery trucks traveling in many directions, weaving around one another, stopping, going, picking up and dropping off. 
valet attendants pay close attention to their surroundings. For valet safety, it's just paying attention to your surroundings. Look where you are going, slow down, be slow with anything, just treat the vehicle as your own. Valet attendants augment their ability to protect personal property and human life with surveillance cameras, signs, mounted mirrors for seeing around corners, and flashing lights and alarms to alert pedestrians on the sidewalk. On the ground, attention-grabbing yellow paint and rubber suggest safe boundaries between cars and people. Despite all this, it is still an unpredictable space. We documented in field notes and maps how the valet ideally organized space, which surprisingly included organizing public spaces like sidewalks and curbs. Pedestrians, ride shares, and non-valet drivers, however, move through and use these pickup and drop-off areas in ways that significantly depart from valet's ideal. The valet attendants in our study managed spaces beyond the driveway, places that included a significant presence of rideshare vehicles, pedestrians, scooters, and more. As new mobility options develop in the next five to 10 years, like rideshare services and autonomous vehicles, it's worth considering how changes to mobility options may impact our urban streetscapes and valet jobs. Will greater use of rideshare services decrease the need for valet service at downtown hotels? Will city parking garages and surface lots steadily lose revenue and eventually be repurposed? Will growing numbers of rideshare users and potentially robo-taxi fleets further complicate and make our busy urban streetscapes more dangerous? And importantly, will autonomous vehicle systems be able to provide care and stewardship for the things that matter to people alongside valet staff or to the same degree that valet staff do? In spite of new options to people's mobility, valet staff assert there will still be a need for their services in the future. And we suggest that customers in the future will continue to seek out the things that they value in valet service, including convenience, luxury, and protection of personal property. The future of human mobility requires a future of care and stewardship for things that matter to people. Our desire for stewards of time of personal property and human safety in parking and transportation landscapes, as far as we can see, is central to valet staff service and will continue to be a human need into the future.